G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as we're going to be talking a little bit about how the Eagles are going in the uh, pre-season training that's just kicked off back again for the 2024 season. I often do uh, Eagles videos on the channel if you're new to the channel. Not super often, but I do cover them a little bit more closely than any other team because I'm a huge Eagles nuffy. So we're going to talk a little bit about some talking points from the training session and the press conference from Adam Simpson. So things I'm going to talk about are we seem to have a bit of an answer as to what position Harley Reid's going to play for the Eagles in 2020 which was uh, certainly a point of interest for me and I'm sure many others. And then there's a few sort of injury concerns we can talk about in this video too. So I want to talk about Harley Reid first because uh, this one has been a, certainly a point of intrigue for me because when we drafted Harley Reid, right, Harley Reid is quite a powerful utility type. Like I found it hard to categorize him as a pure midfielder ahead of this year's draft because he isn't really. He's played pretty much everywhere and has succeeded in all of those different roles. He's shown really, really good versatility. He can make it as a sort of undersized power forward at times. He can obviously mix it as a midfielder. That's probably what his primary position will be going forward, and that's probably where he's going to make the most impact. He's also played behind the ball as a bit of a distributor and medium-sized defender as well, mostly focused on rebounds and attacking kicks and stuff like that, and that's where I think a lot of his highlights come from. But at the same time, he can play up the ground, and uh, you know, in a one-on-one -on -one situation, you've seen him outmark taller players as well. So I wasn't really sure exactly how the Eagles would utilize him. I kind of thought we might play him in the forward line. It seemed more like an Eagles thing to do, and it's probably where we have more uh, need for reinforcement as well in the 450, particularly that was the case in 2023. We know that he's probably going to be a midfielder eventually, but as an 18-year-old, he does need to find a second position, and uh, we're blessed with Harley Reid where we can kind of choose, you know, we're not really shoehorning him anywhere. He has the ability to impact in different roles, so what I'm referring to here is the fact that Adam Simpson, at the moment, and this is not absolutely categorical and things can change, but he alluded to the fact that he kind of sees Reid probably playing more back back half to start with stints on the ball. He makes the comment that he, uh, he obviously is going to get exposure at stoppages, I'm paraphrasing, but he can't play 110 minutes there a game, which we kind of already knew. And most young 18 year old midfielders shouldn't be doing that in their first season, ideally. So having a second position is handy. But the interesting part is that they see him more behind the ball than necessarily playing in the forward 50 at this stage. It sounds like he has played a little bit of both uh, from a quote from him uh, last week or something like that, how he said that in match them, he started down back one game and they chucked him in the forward line the next game. So it sounds like they see an opportunity for him in defensive 50. And I got to say, I actually really like this. I know there's a school of thought that doesn't want to waste the number one draft pick in the back pocket or whatever like that, but I do think that's not the best way of looking at it because Harley Reid will evolve into a midfielder who probably will become a midfielder forward. But you kind of look at the Harry Sheasel example of this where Harry Sheasel was a gun medium-sized forward compared to Stevie J in his draft year. Goes pick two and then gets chucked on a half-back flank. He wins the Rising Star. He goes on to win North Melbourne's best and fairest as well. And the reason is because it's kind of an easier role for an 18-year-old to start, first of all. So he can play as a rebounding, unaccountable defender to some extent, not completely unaccountable, but it is important to have a really high-quality distributor coming out of the back half. So for the Eagles, like, it's been a while since we've really had a quality one. I think the best example that I've seen of it for a while is Lewis Jetta. And, and I think back to like 2019 when the Eagles had a fit Lewis Jetta. That was probably the best version of Jetta that I can remember. And again, I'm kind of relying on memory here, but I remember being at Optus Stadium and watching him when you can see all the play unfolding, you could see Lewis Jetta just hit these ridiculous 45 degree angle kicks that would go 50 meters. And the Eagles who had previously been, you know, maybe huddled up in one part of the ground would suddenly have a way into the 450 quite easily because of an amazing Lewis Jetta kick. And I do think we probably lacked someone like that. Someone like Shannon Hearn comes to mind, but I think if we're real with ourselves, we think about what Shannon Hearn, what the late career version of Shannon Hearn was. He was almost like just like a powerful defender that didn't make too many mistakes. I argue his defensive game as a one-on-one -on -one defender was probably his one word by the end of his career. He didn't do a lot of streaming at halfback and kicking it long like he started his career doing. So the long and the short of it is I think Harley Reid, there's a gap in this 22 for a player like that. So I like it on two fronts. I think on the one hand, he is good enough and ready-made enough to improve the best 22 as a running defender from day dot. And that's tempting to me because we do need someone to improve the best 22. There's other ways we can improve it as well. Injuries coming back, other players developing. But in terms of a gap in this list, maybe Kobe Bergil was the player I was hoping would come in and be that. But I think Harley Reid starting his career there could improve us from day one because by contrast, 
I had this fear that if we played him as a sort of deep power forward who then rolled through the midfield, you know, he'd start probably getting games of like eight touches, 12 touches in a team that's probably going to struggle a little bit this year. Certainly at times. And I just kind of like this idea of giving him confidence, giving him license to play with flair. It sounds like they're doing based on the language of Adam Simpson. He's talking about letting, you know, Harley Reid play his natural game. And I think he can do that in the back half quite well. We've seen a lot of his highlights, like I said, of him, you know, winning the ball in the back line. Great evasiveness. He's not amazingly quick. I don't know what he tests at. I don't think he went to the combine, but you can see that he does have good evasiveness and burst speed. So he can create some rebound there and he's a very good kick. Now, is he as good a kick as Lewis Jetta? Lewis Jetta is one of the best field kicks that I can remember ever at AFL level. But Lewis Jetta also has talked about publicly how much he worked on that skill. It wasn't just something that he innately had. I think Harley Reid is a good above average kick. I think he's a very good kick actually. And it could be something that he hones. So maybe the, the first versions of Harley Reid that we see are him deployed in this Dacos or Sheasel kind of halfback role. And I really do think if he plays as a defender midfielder as opposed to a forward midfielder, then his chances of winning the Rising Star just tripled in my opinion because I was probably previously reluctant to, to have Harley Reid in my predictions for the Rising Star, but I think if he plays in the halfback role, first of all, get him in your fantasy team, and second of all, he's a real chance for the Rising Star if he stays fit. So I love that move. I don't want him to be you know, consigned to the halfback flank for the entirety of his career. Obviously not. I'm just talking about his first couple of seasons. Then we'll see that evolution. You know, I, I expect we'll see Nick Dacos become more of a midfielder in time. I expect we'll see Harry Shees will be, probably end up as a forward mid. And Harley Reid, by contrast, I think he can improve this best 22. I think this is the best way to get him confidence. I think he can impact the game early. And as he sort of develops over time, he builds his tank. He builds his AFL readiness. He is very AFL ready, but it's still going to take a little bit of time before he can start doing what he does at junior level at AFL level and until then I like him in the back half and uh, we'll see how he goes so let me know in the comments section Eagles fans and others uh, what you think of Harley Reid starting his career as a defender because I do know there's probably been some mixed opinions about this so that was a very long monologue about Harley Reid. Let's talk about a couple of other notes from the training that happened uh, today or yesterday as you're watching this. Um, we had a couple of hammies. So the injury situation, again, I don't want to overblow it, but I also do think it's worth keeping an eye on. So a couple of annoying ones. Liam Ryan has done his hamstring. The good news is it's not the same hamstring that he basically tore off the bone last year and it ended his season in round three. It's the opposite hamstring, which I presume is a good sign rather than re-injuring the same one. That being said, it's still a hamstring and it sounds like it's a legitimate strain. So I don't know how long that's going to keep him out for. A standard hammy, you know, depending on the severity, could be up to four weeks in bad cases. Uh, and the other one is Kobe Bergeel. And this one annoys me as well because another player who had a season-ending hamstring injury, but equally has also done it to a, the different hamstring that he had uh, injured last year. Nonetheless, this Bergeel hamstring situation worries me because I feel like he's done so many since he's been drafted. He's only been here 12 months. And uh, he's another player that I just really wanted to see get some continuity this year. Even if he didn't play at all at AFL level in 2024, ideally because the team's harder to break into than it was last year. But if he gets some continuity in the waffle, I think he could still develop a lot in that 12-month phase and look to enter into the team in 2025. And that may still be the case. We don't know the severity of that injury. Simo referred to it as kind of being probably a little bit more tightness, but... I think we all have a little bit of PTSD around these injuries, particularly repeat hamstrings, which seems to have played the club for the last few years. So that those are the main injury concerns. There were some other uh, notes, uh, you know, Ruben Jinby's deloading at the moment. So what that means is he was going really hard, came back to the club in ripping shape, um, trained the house down. And uh, I think even before Christmas and now slightly after Christmas, they're just giving him less to do. But it sounds like he's a bit of a bull at the gate, which is promising, but we have to remember how young he is. And there is such a thing as going too hard and you might get physical burnout as well as uh, mental burnout as well. A couple of other updates, Elijah Hewitt and Dom Sheed. So Dom Sheed, as was reported a few weeks ago, um, had a moon boot on because there was a bit of a hot spot in his foot. It does sound like he's not far off running again, which is good. Sounds like he's still in the frame for round one. Elijah Hewitt, this is an interesting one. So he uh, had a toe injury, I think, that was uh, hanging around from last season and they sort of eased him. I don't think he did too much work pre-Christmas at all. And it sounds like he got some new boots and he got some pretty bad blisters and therefore wasn't training today, which is a weird one, but I've had some horrific blisters in my time. So I can understand why they 
didn't want to make them worse. But that one's it's sort of promising in the sense that it's not like still his toe. Uh, but we'll see on that one. I, I think it's going to be slow and steady for Elijah because again, these kids are pretty young and uh, hopefully we give him a good training block to really launch into 2024 because I think he's a hugely important player to our future. If he doesn't necessarily get up by round one, that's fine. But if he's there by round three or round four and he's had a little um, you know, time to catch up from a pre-season point of view, then uh, that's all good. So to summarize this video, we found a position for Harley Reid, potentially. Again, nothing's locked in and things can change throughout the season. But I do like that the club is at least looking at the back line point of view because I do think this is the best way to get maximum value out of him from season one and then he will eventually develop into another role and then I talked about Liam Ryan and Kobe Bergio having hamstring concerns and comparatively there was a little bit more promising news on Elijah Hewitt and Dom Sheed who were probably not too far away so that's all I got for an update guys so let me know in the comments what you think about everything I've discussed in this video we're not too far away from the preseason stuff kicking off I think it's about a month from now which uh you know is a long time but for me it's Nice that it's only four weeks away, I reckon. But as always, hope you're enjoying the content. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the comments section. Cheers.